In late August of 1862, the Union Army of the Potomac and the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia met for the second time near the town of Manassas, Virginia. For the second time, the Confederate forces were victorious. The Federal Army, defeated, re retreated across the Potomac River and regrouped around Washington. In early September, fresh from a series of victories, Confederate General Robert E. Lee asked President Jefferson Davis for permission to leave Virginia and take the war north into Maryland, and further, if possible. Lee and Davis hoped that a victory on northern soil would help to further demoralize an already despondent northern populace, which had already endured loss after loss in a war that was supposed to last only three months. Such a victory would force the northern president, Abraham Lincoln, to offer peace or leave office. They also hoped the victory would ensure that the European powers would recognize Southern independence and come to the Confederates' aid. With permission in hand, the Army of Northern Virginia crossed the Potomac into the state of Maryland. This move caused the Army of the Potomac, now under the command of General George McClellan, to pursue. These two armies will meet again outside the town of Sharpsburg, Maryland, near Antietam Creek, leading to the bloodiest single day of the Civil War.
Beyond the hollow ground, the green cornfield swayed and moved, although there was no wind. The glint of bayonets could be seen here and there among the leafage, and long, tearing volleys came out of the corn, while wreaths of yellowish-white smoke drifted above it as if the whole field were steaming. A bullet enters my knapsack just under my left arm while I'm taking aim. Another passes through my haversack, which hangs upon my left hip. Still another cuts both strings of my canteen. Having lost all natural feeling, I laugh at these mishaps as though they were huge jokes and remark to my nearest neighbor that I shall soon be relieved of all my trappings. General Hooker reported, in the time I am writing, every stalk of corn in the northern and greater part of the field was cut as closely as could have been done with a knife, and the Confederate slain lay in rows precisely as they had stood in their ranks a few moments before.
ocean billows to break on the rock of Gibraltar. We will stay here if we must all go to hell together. Tell General Longstreet to send me some ammunition. I have not a cartridge in my command, but will hold my position at the point of the bayonet. General Lee asked, Great God, General Hood, where is your splendid division? General Hood replied, They are lying on the field where you sent them. Then the bridge, to the last man, always the bridge. If the bridge is lost, all is lost. When asked to take the bridge by a Union colonel, the exchange was, Will you give us our whiskey, Colonel, if we take it? Yes, my God, you shall have as much as you want if you take the bridge. If I have to send to New York and pay for it out of my own purse, will you take it? Second, the air was full of the hiss of bullets and the hurtle of great shot. The whole landscape for an instant turned slight red. I see again as I saw it then in a flash. A man just in front of me dropped his musket and threw up his hand, stung by a bullet behind the ear. Many men fell going up the hill, but it seemed to be all over in a moment. I found myself passing a hollow where a dozen wounded men lay. During that long and terrible fight, not a man, except a wounded one, fell out and went to the rear. Not a man. The severest fighting of the war was followed by the most appalling sights upon the battlefield. Never, I believe, was the ground strewn with, strewn with the bodies of the dead and dying in greater numbers or in more shocking attitudes. Let those who desire to witness a great battle and gratify themselves with the sublimest spectacle which mortals ever gaze upon hear but once the cries and groans of the wounded and see the piles of dead men in attitudes which show the writhing agony with which they die, and all the scenes upon the battlefield 
which fill one with horror and sadness, and they will be content to deprive themselves in the future of the sight of a battle scene. statue of the God, which had one foot of marble and one of clay, so stood the Union, strong with its marble foot of liberty and weak with the clay of slavery. 
failing and breaking from that weakness, the great statue itself tottered and fell. But from the clouds and terror of that wild upheaval, it emerges radiant, supreme, steadfast forever, both feet of spotless marble. <laughs>